New research outlines that global competition for vaccine doses could lead to price spiking exponentially in comparison to a collaborative effort such as COVAX facility. It would also lead to a prolonged pandemic as only a small number of countries would get most of the supply. Vaccine nationalism only helps the virus. The world has so far invested 12 trillion US dollars in keeping economies moving. Investing in the COVAX facility is the fastest way to end this pandemic and ensure a sustainable economic recovery. Hello, everybody. What we are learning about infection is that people do uh, develop an immune response. And uh, what is not completely clear yet is for how long, how strong that immune response is and for how long that immune response lasts. There's very good data coming out from research studies which are being conducted all over the world that are looking at this immune response for people who have had a mild infection, people who have had asymptomatic infection, people who have had severe infection. And we're seeing that they do develop uh, an, an immune response and most people do. Uh, um, and so what we understand from the press release is that this may be an example of reinfection. Do you want me to take that? Uh, Dr. Sumia? We have started discussions now with the authorities in Russia to learn more about uh, the vaccine candidate. And we've, uh, we've requested for the data on efficacy and safety. Um, we understand that it's gone through some preliminary human studies um, and that it is about to get into a phase three uh, clinical trial, which will really be the test of, uh, of efficacy. So we look forward to, to discussing with the, with the Russian uh, authorities as well as seeing the data that is available so far and then having a dialogue on what uh, the further needs should be and how um, further studies would need to be done. And this is 4th of August. Uh, speaking to you from the Geneva WHO headquarters and welcoming you to the uh, global COVID-19. Um, so this data is preliminary, but the bottom line is that children can be infected. Most children have mild disease, although some children can have serious disease and some children can die. Children can transmit the virus, um, although there are differences in transmission rate depending on the age, with the youngest children transmitting less. Um, and, and these are studies that are ongoing. So if school, if there's transmission that's happening in a community, it can enter into the school system. So what we really need to focus on is bringing transmission down in the school system. We have outlined guidance on how schools can reopen safely. Everyone agrees how important it is that schools are operating safely. And we've outlined how that can be done in terms of physical distancing and hand hygiene stations, um, respiratory etiquette, the potential use of masks by, the, by either the workers or the children themselves. Um, and so there are a number of considerations of how the schools can be opened. But again, we really need to focus on reducing transmission in the community first. Press conference today. Today we're going to have a 